Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the very basics of natural language processing and pretty much what you really need to know. Sentiment analysis in its most basic form is that it's trying to categorize strings of text into buckets of judgments, opinions, or maybe even feelings about a particular topic or subject. Natural language processing is a huge field that encompasses so many fascinating applications such as speech recognition or even translation. Text exists on essentially every platform that we visit, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, and I'm sure there's some other sites out there, but each of these text blocks has some value to it. And we can use this text to build something, whether it be a sentiment analysis machine, which I'm gonna be doing and demonstrating today based on Twitter data. You can also use this type of data for you know, maybe other projects in order to maybe uh, identify some form of machine that can write its own code, for instance. Who knows? Natural language processing is really hard to implement really, really well. For instance, if we are working with a sentiment analysis machine, identifying a positive or negative connotation can be quite hard with the type of data that we are working with. Let's take the example of Reddit. There are many subreddits that exist out there whose entire culture evolves around the idea of self-deprecation. And that very small ecosystem is actually a positive thing. Uh, and if we were to run a general machine learning model and natural language processing model on that particular subreddit, we would in turn have many, many negative posts. But in reality, these posts are not really negative because that's what the culture is there. So it is very difficult to actually train a really, really good, robust uh, machine learning model related to sentiment because uh, currently, our data that we are feeding into our given model can't, it's like so one dimensional that it can't really identify, for instance, like sarcasm. Nonetheless, for our clarity and understanding of how to create a natural language processing model related to sentiment, I'll be going over the very high level overview uh, as to what it takes to create a sentiment model from the data preparation all the way to the model creation. And in the end, we will have a prediction format so that whenever we plug in some block of text, we would have a negative or a positive connotation prediction associated with that text block. So hopefully it comes out well and let's get down to it. Okay, so I'm going to be going over a real quick um, sentiment analysis demonstration of NLP using Spacey and NLTK, but they'll be a little bit separate uh, as you will see later on. In this. Also, if you're not familiar with you know basic machine learning concepts such as linear, uh, logistic regression and you know what are all the intricacies that are involved with machine learning, I highly recommend they check out you know just logistic regression in general or maybe some of my other supervised learning uh, technique videos out there. These are all of the packages that uh, I will be using. And so the general idea behind the pre-processing of text when you are going through your NLP phase is that you will always have some form of tokenization. You're going to be trying to remove some of the stop words that are you know really quite unnecessary and converting all of your maybe like your verbs uh, back to its root form to like an infinitive. Real quick demonstration when we're doing this. This is the text that I will be working with uh, just in terms of the spacey implementation side. Um, once you have your text and you're feeding that into your overall model for training or prediction or whatever uh, you may be doing with that, uh, the overall objective here is then to try to um, find a pattern so that you can essentially try to you know remove unnecessary verbiage or words in general. So we can see here, uh, this is one of this is basically just removing any all punctuation in general. So we can see here. Hi, with an exclamation point is gone. My name is Spencer. I love doing videos related to tech implementation slash. 
is out. Uh, and then we see here approximately seven o'clock PM that's out over there. And then my little smiley face is out as well. So it's removing all of those characters that we don't necessarily need. We will then load in our given already preloaded model, our language model, English. I just loaded in the large one and you want to pass in your result, your resulting text into the doc of the NLP. This doc will essentially um, just be uh, used as the base for your entire language models. And over here, we would have to tokenize everything. Either A, you would want to split each word into its individual object, or you can do it by sentence. Uh, however, well, whichever way you would want to do it uh, will work, but you can, well, in this case, I did it by objects within a given list. And as you can see, each word is split into its own object over here inside of that list. And of course, uh, within that particular token, you can identify whether or not that particular token is actually like redundant, like a stop word. In this case, you would want to remove it. Uh, and we can look at over here, the lemmatized token. So that's basically normalizing your particular token back to its root form. So related. So this is an example right here, related and relates. So related is actually just chopped off the um, the verb tense uh, on that made it from past tense to present tense relates and it'll keep on doing this uh, throughout all of your tokens and uh, Spacey has a really really fast implementation to do that so this will be the final uh, the final form so that we can then just plug this in and this is the uh, vector format that we will see uh, that will actually be plugged into the overall model. So this entire token, just one token, in fact, uh, let me just print out that token. It will always be a vector of 300, uh, size of vector 300. And this particular vector will be fed into the overall machine learning model that we will you know, implement. And this is just the way of how all these language models, you know, make sure that each of these words are associated with each other because they have a, a specific key that's associated with that particular value. But nonetheless, switching gears a little bit, I did use a lot of code related to this Kaggle uh, notebook over here. So I highly recommend that you do check that out. I did tweak it here and there, um, but I did get a lot of my inspiration from this notebook and the link is in the description. Do make sure to check that out. Uh, so over here, I'm using Twitter data. Uh, this is all pre-processed. Uh, I'm trying to identify whether or not a particular tweet, this text, is going to be a negative tweet or a positive tweet. And the real beautiful thing about this is that it's already sort of cleaned for me. I don't really need to go into you know trying to identify whether or not that particular tweet was negative or positive. And I already went ahead and I... I just cleaned out all the unnecessary words from the text file given over here. So next up over here, uh, this is where the NLTK sort of uh, comes into play of where I can remove additional stop words if I really need to needed to. And also I'm stemming it. So I'm normalizing all of the words that exist within the text over there and removing any additional special characters. And then I'm joining all the tokens back into uh, that particular cell. Run that and then, you know, get that train and test splits. Next step, once you have cleaned all of your text elements and you are satisfied that the particular tweet has all the relevant information that you would want in order to identify whether or not that tweet is positive or negative, you would then want to use or create a layer uh, that essentially tries to find the relationships amongst all of the text elements that exist within that particular feature. And that is where word to vec comes into play. So it's, it's essentially like a really shallow neural network model that whose primary purpose is to identify the relationships of the various vectorized values that go on into the overall model. And note that each of these texts, each of these observations has a specific vector. Uh, and the way that the neural net finds the specific um, 
relationships is that it uses a cosine similarity and it just utilizes the vectorized values to see how close they are to each other and this specific neural network was specifically trained to uh, f essentially find all the various relationships among different words different values and to see how similar they are so incredibly useful and we'll be using this as our very first input layer uh, for our overall model and of course we want to run uh, we want to train the documents which the documents is uh, essentially our text elements see what type of elements are actually very similar to this word over here based on our historical data. And as we can see, the word like has um, similarities with all of these, which is kind of interesting. I don't know how like could be associated with guilty or awful or creepy. So I guess like has some negative connotation <laughs> as within our given data set. That's interesting. So it might be used as like a comparison uh, between, you know, within a given text. See what the comment looks like. Link, okay, feed, delete, click to blog, blog spot, so on and so forth. So this is essentially just trying to find relationships and it's a really useful tool uh, when we're, we are working with the NLP side. Now is the time to go back to our data and start uh, tokenizing our text and create the embedding layer based on our uh, overall model that we created earlier. So tokenizer, just tokenize all of our words based on our text over here, just tokenize them all together. And then this is where we pad our tokenizer values, where we have our X train and X test. And then we are working with, you know, about 100,000, actually exactly 100,000 observations, and it's gonna be 80-20 split. And then this is where we create our embedding layer. Uh, based on our um, word to vec model, uh, we go ahead and, you know, just run this code that we have here and based on the weights of our embedded matrix that we have created based on our previous model, the embedding model, uh, we have that we then have an embedding layer which we will use as an input layer for our overall NLP model. And also here, last but not least, I am essentially just converting the the Y variables to a zero or a one uh, based on the positive or negative values so that the machine can actually understand uh, the differences or the levels of the positive and negative values. Okay, so this is where we actually create our given model over here. Uh, we're using Keras. This is essentially the Keras format in order to create our given model using the sequential layering so we can uh, determine what layer is actually going to be involved within our overall neural network model. And so we're going to be using the embedding layer that we have over here, which we created earlier, all the way up above, using the Word2Vec uh, neural network. That is going to be our input layer. We have a dropout function, and then our, I guess, like the meat of our given model is going to be an LSTM with 100 nodes. And we're going to have, you know, these parameters over here. But also note that we can easily replace this with a BERT model and it might have a little bit of a better performance because BERT is historically known to be really good with natural language processing so if you do have the time I do recommend you to check out what that BERT model is I might do a future video on that uh, and last but not least our output layer and we have a sigmoid uh, function for the binary outcome that we will have on, bi on positive or negative attributes and of course this is what it looks like we have 14 million parameters I'd say that's pretty typical within the natural language processing realm. Uh, and this will take a little bit of time to actually train. Um, I'm using the loss function on binary cross entropy, pretty typical for binary outcomes. And then our optimizers atom, which is essentially the best in the industry, uh, very, very popular. And our metrics could be accuracy. And when, over here for our callbacks, we're just gonna be keeping track of uh, the validation laws and validation accuracy. And note that I actually did run the model. Uh, this took about two hours to run. Uh, it was quite a bit. Um, and as we can see, we see the laws and the accuracy uh, slowly decreasing and increasing respectively over here. And then I ran the evaluation stuff. It's essentially where I'm just passing in the Y test, X test into the model and it's um, batch sizing. So it's, get, it's getting specific attributes from here and it's inputting it into the overall model and evaluating from there. So over here we have an accuracy of 0.75 and a loss of 0.5. So this is actually 
okay. The loss function is actually really high. Ideally, this would be really close to zero. And of course, we want the accuracy to be really close to one. So ideally, this would be close, like in the upper 80s, and this would be like less than 10%. Um, but you know, uh, we are in fact limited by one, the amount of data that we are working with and two, these type of models that we are actually working with, with the NLP. So if we had more data, we might have better results. And also if we have a better infrastructure architecture, we might have better results as well. And I'm just printing out the history of that stuff, accuracy, validation, loss, blah, blah, blah. And over here, I, I just plotted. Uh, the training and validation accuracy. And do remember that this code, uh, at least a good chunk of this code came from that notebook, the Kaggle notebook that I mentioned earlier. So as we can see here, it looks like it's good. The training loss is a little bit higher than the validation loss. And it seems like they are converging to a point very similar to the accuracy over here. So although this model might not be spectacular, it's not the worst in the world. Over here, I'm essentially just utilizing, I tweaked a little bit of the functions over here in order to have a, some specific prediction output. And this is what we are predicting. So whenever we're going to be plugging in our text format into our text over here, it will be predicting whether or not this is going to be a positive, negative uh, sentiment related to that particular text. And over here, of course, I already ran it. Leave a like on this video, comment, subscribe for more. And this is deemed as positive, which is good, right? How about, I hope you like it. That's also good, positive, And I hate this video. If you do, let me know why. That's of course negative. Or we can just replace this, replace this with like, I hate the world, question mark, maybe. <laughs> that should be negative and Lo and behold, we have negative. How about I love you? And that's positive. There you have it. This is sentiment analysis, really neat stuff. It's essentially transforming words into vectors and then vectors into output where we can have a zero or a one output related to that particular model. So if you made it this far, make sure you hit that like button so with the subscribe button as well with those notifications on. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching.